my background was in, one, was in BBC television for 20 odd years, which was very satisfying in a way, and I was trying to focus on global issues, the same kind that One World does now. But what was becoming frustrating in the early 90s particularly was that the gatekeeping by the BBC was getting tighter and tighter, just how much programming they were prepared to take from Africa, just how much uh, exposure they were prepared to give it, money they were prepared to put into it was actually shrinking. And it was true across all the, the main channels in this country. So then, 94, 95, when the net arrived, it seemed to me and to Anuradha Vitachi, the co-founder of One World, that here was a, what we called a people's medium, because that threshold wasn't there. You didn't have to have a million pounds before you could make a television series. You didn't have to have agreement from a channel controller. You could actually put your own material on there. Now, of course, to start with, the web was text and pictures only, pretty much. And so we were kind of waiting for the day when video would arrive. And that day arrived towards the end of the 90s when real video arrived. And very early on, One World had the ambition to say, we want to use video too. But just as with text and pictures, we wanted to make it a people's medium. So this wasn't about getting the great documentary from the BBC put online in those days. It was saying, here's an independent filmmaker, particularly an independent filmmaker from a southern country, whose voice needs to be heard, who's got a perspective that's different, who isn't going to wait until they've got £100,000 and a commission before they can actually get out there. Because the great thing was, of course, that in parallel with the web was the arrival of digital technology. So with a small camera for a couple of thousand pounds, you could actually do really a full documentary and you could mix it, you could edit it on your laptop. So those two revolutions coming together in the creation of television and the distribution of television was a fantastic opportunity for One World and so we started One World TV on that basis and it's been growing ever since. We've always felt there was a gap in the coverage of the real issues that matter in the world to the majority of people, which actually is not celebrities or entertainment or making money or the things that most television programs are about, things that really matter as the dreadful poverty in which people live and the opportunities to change that, the threat of climate change and what that's going to do to the future of our planet, and across a whole range of environmental issues, what's happening to the human rights of, of people in more and more countries as they're oppressed. Those are the stories that we felt weren't being told and needed to be told. Well, it all comes down to individual cases and it comes down to what level you're gambling at. If you're starting off and you're trying to prove uh, that you can do this stuff and you're trying to make a name for yourself, then absolutely do it. Because you've probably only, you know, your time is, comp I don't want to be patronizing, but your time is comparatively cheap because you're starting off, you pour a lot of your own time and enthusiasm into it, you've got that. It doesn't cost you much technically to do it. And then by all means, get it out as widely as you can, get yourself recognized because that's what you need. At the second stage, where you've got a bit of a name, you've sold a couple of films, and actually you're thinking, well, now, how, now I've made a rather good one, what am I going to do with this? Then I guess the best strategy at the moment is to showcase it, but don't give it away. So you show small clips, you get people intrigued, and then you think about how you're actually going to sell it. If you're going to try and sell it to a broadcaster, which is pretty hard to do, um, then the online isn't going to particularly help you. That's a channel you've got to go down on your own, you've got to get to know people, you've got to go to festivals, you've got to try and get awards for it, you've got to get, you know, you use them in the normal channels. I don't think the online is particularly going to help you there. Um, the only thing now is, can you actually make money uh, from the online directly? And there's, you know, Google claims in its press releases that some filmmakers are now making money from Google videos. Uh, well, I've put some of my videos on uh, both Google and YouTube and uh, I don't think I would have made any money. Um, I mean, I think it's up to about six, 7,000 viewings they've had. And at that level, you don't really make any money. Um, so, and again, they are so entertainment orientated and people are watching them in such curious ways. What I mean by that is they're not actually, for the most part, I think, sitting at home and thinking now, what's a really worthwhile way to spend the evening. Shall I go to the cinema? Shall I go to the opera? Shall I read a book? Shall I watch a really great documentary on Google Video? That's not, it's not in that frame yet. I mean, it will be in the future when it's all coming through your set-top box and it's on a good screen and all the rest of it. Um, so I, I'm a little bit skeptical about people actually making money 
from serious independent films of the kind that we're talking about. Certainly short, funny, viral type videos that everyone wants to watch. Yes, I think they've got a good chance of making, making money there. So, but if you're a serious documentary maker, I, say, I would say for the moment, the online world is best as a showcase. Uh, don't give the whole thing away. So in other words, don't put on a high resolution, complete version. Put on part of it, put on teasers, put on trailers put on plenty of links back to your own website so that anyone who is interested and might want to seriously take it up can know about you and can follow through. Use it as a form of promotion. That's if you want to sell it. If you really care about the issue, and of course many f filmmakers care more about the issue than they do about making money, then that's completely different. Um, and I know many filmmakers who will say, in effect, I gave the film away um, but it's been seen by you know 10,000 people around the place or 100,000 people and in terms of getting the issue out that's what I care about so then in that case absolutely use the medium and that's why to me it's a bit odd that some NGOs are reluctant to really put their material out there and are trying to protect it because it seems to me their real mission is around the issue not around maximizing the you know the money from the film so if they can get their uh, you know, the issue of child labor really out there on YouTube and I can get 100,000 downloads, um, I think that's fantastic, even if no one ever gives UNICEF a penny for that. They've, they're fulfilling their mission.